Well, we're getting ready to head out to Kentucky Splash Water Park in Williamsburg, Kentucky, and we got packed up and turned on the camper, pulled in the slides, pulled out of the garage and realized here this screen isn't turning on. Yeah. So, gonna make a few phone calls, troubleshoot, see what we can come up with. This is Camping Life. someone um, at service department. Okay, this is service. How can I help you? So I bought a 2021 Holiday Rambler Nautica from you guys. Uh -huh. And we're getting ready to pull out and I started up my motor home and my dash didn't come up. Okay. It's got that new digital Freightliner dash in it. Uh -huh. And it is black as night. I got the VIN number if you need it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll shut that stick with your generator off. Um, 
underneath this compartment in my yep. and I've got a, a 25 amp a 30 amp and they're big the big bus fuses yep. and then I got a whole bunch of minis And there's no there's no lid here just on the on one of them it says fuse connection and it's got a fuse block connection and there's a couple of relays in here there you go. did you ever take that off before nope oh well go ahead and do your thing i'm just looking well, i'm looking too so Body ignition, auxiliary power, front wiper, accessories. Yeah, it's all good. 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 Yeah, it's Little horsey looking thing. Yeah. It'd be burnt. Oh. New um, Holiday Rambler Nautica and the Optifu dash um, is just blank. It, it won't light up at all. And they say, they, but it's not, it's, that, that is not fused, correct? Someone, uh, someone yeah, told him, not. yeah, someone told him it might have been a fuse. So is there, um, is there a, like a relay or what does he check for? What we've had, what we've had them do, so the, the only thing that they would be able to do if they can get access to the back side of the panel, there's the blue little ethernet cable that plugs into the back of it. They can unplug it and leave it unplugged for about five minutes, plug it back in and see if the uh, display will come on for them. Is that reset it? They, yes, ma'am. If it doesn't, they just have to get it into the Freightliner dealer. Uh, the unit, they can drive it. It's just they're not able to see any of the instrumentations on there. Um, right. But they can get it into the dealer, and more than likely, um, the dealer will have to troubleshoot the, the module, the Viper module that controls that panel. We have been seeing this um, here from time to time. We've been hearing about these things. Oh, this, this or is the first I've heard of it. Okay, gotcha. Yes, ma'am. Um, Will that, uh, do you have access? I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Will that, will that screen pop out of the dash or is it like bolted in, do you know? I believe it's, I believe it is screwed in. Go ahead, Susie. I think it's screwed in. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, I'll see if I can't get in a really awkward position and get on my head and see if I can't find that cable. Stand on your head? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And then, um, Jared, if that if that doesn't work, do you do you need some help finding a, a Freightliner location to, to stop into? Is it something if I pull in and they can get to, you know, that's the thing. Because, like, I know the closest Freightliner dealer, which is Kentucky Truck Sales, are like, well, drop it off and we'll get to it when we get to it. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Jared, you just, um, if there's any that you, like, if you're on the way, uh, I know some of them can do an express assessment for you, like, first two hours i know everyone all of them are different some do appointments some like you said they, they either drop it off for his first come first serve um it would just be checking with them to see if they could run an, at least an express assessment on it for you to see they could troubleshoot try to see what the problem is they can hook the computer up to it and run a quick diagnostic on it when you've had these issues is it something where they've got to change a module or is it just something that has been pretty simple some of it was actually the blue cable. Some of them they were finding it modules good, but there was like a pinch inside the cable. We don't. Some of them it was a twist where it messed up the in, internal part of the cable, um, that blue Ethernet cable, and it wasn't making good. It was making contact, but then all of a sudden it just dropped it out. Um, we were seeing some of that, so it hasn't always been the module. Um, but when we get it in, usually they can look at that. Is that something where I can just change that Ethernet cable out? Is it just a standard DSL cable? Uh, I'm not sure if it, I think it's a little bit different than, it looks like, we always say it's an Ethernet cable, but it's called a Cat7 cable. So I don't know if it's 
identical to a regular Ethernet cable or not. Okay. All right, I'll go up here and see what I can find. Can like a can like a, the the shops at the truck stops look at this, or are they not Freightliner approved? Uh, they're not Freightliner approved. It needs to be uh, not a, a Freightliner dealer dealer that could be able to look at it for you. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. The hard, the only bad thing is is I don't know how much fuel, or I guess I just have to fill it up and call it good. I mean, we're, I'm gonna, I'll see if I can't figure the only, it out. The only other TRC here outside of Jeffersonville, which is Kentucky Truck Sales, we have a Velocity Truck Center over in Bowling Green. That's yeah, uh, you're an hour. Man, it's, it's, if I wasn't doing anything else, it'd be fine, but okay. you're an hour either way out of my way where I'm trying to get to. Two hours, you know what I mean? I gotcha. All right, well, let me see. Um, yes. Let me see what I can come up with. short. I don't know if I'm on record here or not. I got the crap in my hair. Our dash won't light up and so you know these new electronic dashes are great until they don't work so I gotta get a service appointment and see what I can get figured out and get it fixed. Anyway our next adventure is still, on. A, still an adventure. It's an adventure on hold. A different adventure. Yeah disappointing. I am on my way to the Freightliner. Uh, coming up on Mumfordville, Kentucky here. I know that I'm going between 65 and 70, I think. I'm passing a couple of trucks, but I'm mostly being passed, so I'm good. My only concern is, is I don't really, I have an idea how much fuel I got. I don't know um, exactly what I got. I think I had around half a tank before I started this trip. I'm not running the generator, so I'm not burning that, that diesel there. And, yeah, you know, no biggie. Um, my big thing is if, if I had a concern is that I don't know how much uh, air pressure and stuff I'm holding in my for my brakes or how what my engine temperature and all that stuff is. And so, well, I made it to Bowling Green. I am at Neely Cobble Company, which is not a. I thought I was going to a Freightliner dealership, but I'm actually just at a Freightliner repair shop so uh the guys seem here pretty seem pretty great uh very friendly they act like they're gonna get me in uh at least get my or get the uh nautica pulled in the next half hour or so i'm probably gonna leave it here tonight and come back and get it tomorrow i'm only about an hour from the house so it's not terrible it's 80 miles you know you know i think something like that plus i'll probably pick up a donato's pizza and take it to the to the to the house so even though it'd be an iron and a half old pizza we love donato's when you got one at home so anyway yeah i'm out here in bowling green on i-65 uh, most likely i'm gonna head on back in um to the house tonight come back down here and hopefully pick it up tomorrow so this is your freight liner repair shop this is what it looks like so pretty happy with these guys and believe it or not it's across the street from dollar general what more could you ask for so anyway we'll let you know, guys know how it turns out and go from there all right guys it's been a couple of days um went down to bowling green neely cobalt Do uh dodge neely cobalt freightliner got us fixed up so we're all good to go i'm back in the camper um i brought it home friday and i picked it up friday at five o'clock i actually could have picked it up um 
Friday morning. I just had to work. So yeah, you know, it's home. No big deal. It's all fixed. The lights just went out. Let me turn those on. The dash is fixed. So it wasn't a huge deal outside of I did about 80-ish miles with no dash. Um, I knew I had about a half tank of fuel so I could get there, no problem. Knew where I was going. Downloaded the speed, a Speedo app on my phone so I knew how fast I was going. Everything worked like it should uh, besides the dash. I, mean, I still had cruise and you know all the steering wheel controls worked. It was a module, a pretty, pretty, uh, from my understanding, a pretty good job to change. So, show you guys the dash here. Oh, so we are good to go. It's gonna start yelling at me here in a second. All good. So, you know, they called me Wednesday and said, "Hey, it's 72 days for that part to be in," and I was like, "Uh." no that's not cool so then um i had been talking to rev group all the way through this and actually um they were great um susie fletcher was on it and she's working with freightliner custom chassis and they actually called me back and said hey uh we're sorry it's not 72 days for that part it will be in tomorrow morning we'll get it swapped out so part came in on thursday morning um they had a job in front of they had to take care of and then either fr thursday night late or friday morning early this thing was good Picked it up, good to go. Um, so yeah, that was our no dash, no gauge, big problem. Not really a big problem, inconvenient problem. Fixing story. We'll actually show you the invoice on this one. It was about 40, 4,000 bucks, 4,500 bucks, something like that to get this thing fixed. Um, so I'm glad this thing was under warranty. Um, we have talked to a couple of people who had same issues about the same time we did stuff coming um, you know, going out at about 4,000 miles. So we were right at 4,000 miles too. So, so if this video was helpful in any way, please just give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you have any comments or questions for me, just let me know. Anyway, um, we'll talk soon. We'll see you guys the next time.